A fridge full of free food. Welcome back to Good News Next Week, everybody. I'm James Evan Pilato from MediaMonarchy.com. We've got that story, plus soda sales falling flat. But first, last night on 60 Minutes. A story submitted to us on Twitter using hashtag Good News Next Week from at Dylan Sacoccio. A senator just went on 60 Minutes claiming the 9-11 attackers had support from within the U.S. So these are the vaunted 28 pages. Officially titled, Finding Discussion and Narrative Regarding Certain Sensitive National Security Matters, 28 pages long, damning information about 9-11. So what made 60 Minutes do a story last night with former Florida governor, Democratic U.S. Senator, and one-time chairman of the Senate Select Committee on Intelligence, Bob Graham, said this, quote, I think it's impossible plausible to believe that 19 people, most of whom didn't speak English, most of whom had never been in the United States before, many didn't have a high school education, could have carried out such a complicated task without some support from within the United States. Now we're grabbing this story from the freethoughtproject.com and it contains video clips from CBS in 60 Minutes that you can watch for yourself now that the segments have run on April 10th, 2016. We're coming to you on April 11th, 2016 with the 15th episode of Good News Next Week. It's going to be the 15th anniversary later this year, you guys, and for the most part, no one really talks about 9-11 anymore. There's a lot of other sinister elements that want to put the blame all on one group or another, but I think people who have been investigating 9-11 for 15 years know that it's not really that simple. So the article from the freethoughtproject.com goes on to talk about Senator Max Cleland, who called it a national disgrace. It was underfunded, they were stonewalled, they thought they were being lied to, and the question I always asked, if the 9-11 commissioner don't believe the report, then why should you and I? So this is a big possible breakthrough in what we've been fighting for all these years. And again, they'll want you to turn it into some sort of bipartisan battle where you point all the fingers at one group. But it's not that simple. But it is simple to get an independent investigation into the events of 9-11, a real investigation with real independence and real subpoena power. And those kind of things might start to move forward in this 15th anniversary because people will be thinking about it. Now, we were lucky enough a week or so ago to talk to Richard Gage, longtime guy in Architects and Engineers for 9-11 Truth. They are actually on a big 13-city tour all around the Pacific Northwest, pretty much as we speak right now, and it's Richard Gage and Eric Lawyer. So you can hit up the Media Monarchy archives for our recent short and sweet interview with Richard Gage of Architects and Engineers for 9-11 Truth. But I'm also reminded of something in the YouTube archives of MediaMonarchy.com, right here where you might be watching this show right now. For the ninth anniversary, you may have recalled it being fraught with, we're going to burn the Quran and yada yada. Me and Clyde Lewis pulled a publicity stunt here in Portland where we burnt the 9-11 Commission report to bring attention back to the events of 9-11 and the lies and omissions of the official report. The local coin news station was actually the only station to come out and cover us and talk about that and give it pretty fair coverage and put us in their entire 9th anniversary 9-11 coverage. That will be linked up in this video as well. Our cover story this week on Good News Next Week, submitted to us by our buddy at Brock West, but we saw it in a lot of places, and that's in some ways why and how we gauge what we want to talk about here on Good News Next Week, what is resonating in a positive way with people. And that's all about why we're doing Good News Next Week. So I saw this story, and I saw several people share it, and that to me means it is that much more important to share it with you here on Good News Next Week as we go to India. Restaurant puts fridge of free food outside so hungry people can take what they need. A restaurant in India praised around the world after it installed a fridge outside and filled it with free food for homeless people. Minu Pauline, who owns the Papa Devada restaurant in Kerala, India, on India's southwest coast, had the idea for the fridge when she noticed a woman searching around in the garbage outside for something to eat. That night, her restaurant had leftovers that easily could have fed the woman, so she decided to start what they call the Tree of Goodness. That is this fridge that you can see right here standing outside of the Papa Devada restaurant. Now, the better part is it's getting filled with a ton of food. 
But the owner actually notes people are buying food to fill it to help people out. That's not even exactly what she wants. She knows that we have enough food that is wasted all around. You don't have to buy new food. You're, as we've talked about in previous episodes, that's how you eliminate your waste is by not buying that waste in the first place when you're buying packaged food. So the idea is that she wants leftover food to be put in here, food that would otherwise spoil that's already sitting in your fridge, and you're not spending even more money in supporting, perhaps, organizations and corporations that might not have your best interests at heart. So another very simple, very positive thing, and that's why we do Good News Next Week. Our third and final story this week, submitted to us on Twitter at Ms. Siren Watcher, takes us to Organic Authority. As we note, soda and soft drink sales plummet to their lowest since 1985. 30-year low. Total volume soda sales declined 1.2% in 2015, an even greater margin than the year before in 2014, and it's essentially been down for 11 years in a row now putting it at a 30-year low. Like a lot of things, and this is what James and I would talk about on New World Next Week, as we essentially talked about good news on every single episode through the year of 2015, and that's what led to the spinoff series that you're watching right now. We would sometimes jokingly talk about things a not unmitigated good news story, and yes, you'll find people even in the comments below looking to pick apart and bust down anything that may smack of positivity. But there are fine print points to note, and this article from Organic Authority actually goes to the president of Coca-Cola and says, well, we're actually making more money than ever. Yeah, less people are buying it, but they're paying more money. I'm paraphrasing the way he put it, but that's essentially the same thing that's been going on in movie theaters all around the world for the last couple of decades as well. You've got fewer people paying more for less. And we've discussed on The Morning Monarchy and we've discussed in our Food World Order shows that a lot of what has also been done, and I saw this on the shelves at the organic grocery store I used to work for here in Portland, you call it food inflation. And we posted this story to Media Monarchy Five years ago, actually, back in March 2011, and the story originates from the Gothamist Nabisco's cheating you out of precious saltines, but it's food inflation being hidden in tinier and tinier packages. So what happened after the econo crash, as well as the food revolution, companies basically shrunk their sizes but kept the product dimensions the same so that when you're scanning those store shelves, you're not perceiving that you're losing an ounce. And they did it to the tuna cans, and they did it to the soup cans, and they did it to many, many of the pre-packaged products you're going to find in your grocery stores. Most companies just did one thing or the other. They shrunk the package, or they raised the price, which most companies you would imagine would be loath to do. You're not going to notice the size change on your receipt, but you're certainly going to notice if the price had changed. Very few companies did both, and actually Newman's was one of the few companies I noticed, again, while I was still working at the grocery store, they just went balls out and shrunk their packages and raised their prices at the same time. So, again, a bit of caveat as Coca-Cola is making even more money off of selling people little pony-sized Cokes, and we call people who buy those Coke suckers. Some of the other headlines we are looking at on Good News Next Week, and the current F Florida governor comes into play. We had the previous former governor at the top of the show, and now we hit the former Florida governor. He went out for some corporate Starbucks coffee the other day, and he got a super huge earful from a constituent who said he was an asshole who doesn't care about working people and should be ashamed to show his face around here. We can include that video as well, and unfortunately after that, the story gets worse. Our buddy Joel Van Doren noted Wells Fargo to pay $1.2 billion to settle mortgage fraud case. However, that would be a fraction of their profits. Meanwhile, UK's younger generations prefer cash, showing we are not a cashless society just yet. And again, from Joel Van Doren, NASA releases 3 million thermal images of our planet Earth that are pretty rad to look at. At Eric Moshe notes, cacti can clean drinking water, and grabs that from NPR. Colorado is turning food waste into electricity. Blueberries might even help treat shell shock, what we used to call 
post-traumatic stress disorder, and that is a report from Science Daily. And we wrap it up since it is National Pet Day, and we, of course, have our pet always in the background of these Good News Next Week episodes. That's Frankie the Cat. She's always on these shows, and we appreciate that. Firefighters in Florida rescue a bear cub from a brush fire, and there are cute photos and videos of that just to give you a little bit of warm fuzzy and a nice easy way to wrap up this 15th episode of Good News Next Week. We always love your good news at hashtag good news next week, and you can always reach out to james at mediamonarchy.com. We are going to lean into the positive as the world wants you to give in to the dark side, and we're not going to do it. This has been Good News Next Week for April 11th, 2016. I'm James Evan Pilato from MediaMonarchy.com reminding you, as always, don't hate the media, become the media. Take care. Yeah.